Hello everyone, welcome to RRL. My name is Mohit, I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce, and I'm excited to share all of the innovations that we have done in Apex for summer 24 for all of you Apex developers, and also for all of you Apex developers now focusing on data cloud in Apex. With that, I have divided this into two segments, one focusing on platform features, and we'll also get into data cloud features as well. So first, Apex updates for platform. So I have consolidated these three features because I think these three features are gonna have an impact on all of the uh, code that you're building. So uh, we're gonna take a look at today uh, the five level Sockle relationship query support that we have added. Now this is gonna make it very easy for all of you to efficiently query and manipulate complex data with relationships. Next, I'm gonna show you some demos on formula eval class. So with this, you'll be able to construct and evaluate formulas you know, dynamically at runtime. This is gonna improve application flexibility. And then finally, one of my favorite features for this release, Apex Cursors. So with this, we will be able to process this large Sockle query results into smaller batches within our single transaction. So, uh, you know, I know you all love demos, so without further ado, let's hop on to our demo and see all of these in action. So first, I'm gonna start by showing you an example code that I've built to showcase this formula evaluator. That's in beta, so I wanna try, I wanna make sure that you know that this, these things are in beta, so make sure you, you try that as we bring these features into GA. So here I'm looking at an account here, and we, I have this field called rating, uh, which depends on these two fields, territory and annual revenue. So based on the territory and the annual revenue, uh, the rating uh, field formula is calculated. Now you might be tempted to build this in uh, formula field, nothing wrong with that, except that when your application grows, let's say you, know, you have hundreds of territories based on zip code, you will see that you'll slowly hit the formula limits. And that's why I'm excited that with formula evaluator class in Apex, all these kind of functionalities can be easily achieved. So let's look at this territory records that I have. So just for an example, I have two territories here, uh, AMR and APAC, and you can see that now within a, a custom field called rating formula, I'm able to directly put my formula there right away in my records. And now I'll be able to apply these formulas directly using Apex. So let's see this in action. Uh, and before, uh, I mean, before we see this in action, I also want to make sure that, you know, for this particular trigger use case that I have where I calculate this rating, there is also a, a, a custom metadata record here. Uh, I want to use this criteria formula as well. Now that we have this formula fields, I don't want to hard code this annual revenue into my uh, code because you know today the criteria says 10,000 revenue. Maybe you know uh, it changes to uh, some other dollar amount in the in the future. So I want to give that flexibility to my admin so they can uh, you know keep these criteria and and easily manage that. So I don't want to hard code them. Um, so coming back to the demo, right? Let's take a look at this demo uh, in action. So here I am on an account, um, and the rep here, you know, is wondering. He's definitely not performed poor. He just realizes that hey, you know, he's just made a wrong selection of the territory. So he's going to change it to APAC here, and you can see that the rating field actually flipped to a, a better rating, right? So what just happened was the formula got applied. So let's see this, uh, you know, how I built this trigger uh, using the code. So here I am in, uh, in that account trigger. So you can see that now I'm using this formula instance class. And this instance class uh, uses builder pattern as you can see. Uh, and I've been able to pass the criteria directly by querying that metadata that I just showed you. So here there is a simple query. I'm querying that metadata that has the criteria formula. So now my triggers are more dynamic in terms of the criteria here. Uh, and next I want to apply that to the rating field here. So what I'm doing here is there is a method called get territory formulas, and you can see there is a map here that I'm building. Uh, just like best practices, right? I want to uh, write bulkified code here. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this territory rating formula instance for, um, you know, and making sure that I have a map where I can uh, store these instances. So here you can see that there is a map where I'm putting the territory ID and the formula instance. And again, the formula is stored on the record uh, called rating formula on the territory object. 
Um, so with that, I'm able to simply apply that formula and then we are able to just use that before, uh, before update trigger to update that. So this is, uh, in nutshell, the, the formula evolve, and you can see how you can use it within your triggers. Um, and uh, you know this is powerful, right? And of course, with, with power, I want to remind that with great power comes great responsibility. So make sure that you evaluate this formula, test it in the sandbox before you kind of uh, apply this into, into production application. And also consider the governance, you know, because you need to think about the governance here now that all these things are right away in your data as well. Uh, I also wanted to show another example uh, of this uh, formula evaluator. So lighting components, you know this lighting components, right, that you can use Apex. So here, what I want to show you is, I've just put together a simple UI. Again, it uses that formula evaluator class. And uh, using that, I can actually apply some formulas on my existing records. Like in this case, I'm just looking at a formula result which says that you know none of my account records, uh, sorry, contact records have uh, the the formula result as false. I mean, none of them have last name as uh, blank. But let's check for the first name here. Let's flip the formula here, evaluate it, and you can see I have one record where the first name is missing, right? So you can see how powerful it is. Like you can apply these formulas directly to your set of records and then uh, evaluate them directly in the runtime without having to create these fields on the database layer. Uh, let's try. Uh, let's try something. Uh, more uh, uh, you know, complex here. It's not complex, right? It's, it's easy, but let's say I want to concatenate this first name and the last name. And you can see that the formula works with text data type return type. A uh, little more complex, we can go here. This is more complex, and again, you, you can evaluate. The thing that I wanted to show is I'm also reading all the fields here that I'm using in my formula in my Apex 2, and that is because, again, these formula evaluators provide me that capability. Another capability I want to show is if there is an error, our uh, Apex is also returning that error as well. Let's try one with the date fields as well. So here I'm returning uh, uh, the age of the contact by the birth date, and just use integer here and you can see it's evaluated the dates for all the contacts that had the birthday. So you see the power of these formulas. I mean, they, they give you this uh, you know, superpower to make your application flexible and dynamic. Next thing that I wanted to show you was cursors. So let's actually get into the code example right away, and uh, I want to show you an example of how I have made use of this feature called cursors uh, and added capabilities to Qable to make it more powerful. So you all know Qable classes, right? So with cursors, what I will be able to do is query the set of records and then paginate them either in the forward direction or in the backward direction and assign indexes to them and then process this. To show you here is a simple um, you know, Qable class and uh, this class again is a uh, I've called it as cursor queuable. And what I'm doing here in this class is using power of cursor. So you can see this system.database.getQuery where I'm collecting all the records. And what I want to show you here is, uh, you know, I'm able to use this cursor.fetch, which allows me to pass in the current location and the batch size. So I can break this uh, large set of query records that I have into the, into the batches that I want to work with, right? So with this feature, you'll be able to uh, process large chunk of records by breaking them into, into batches. So how about we go and execute this code and see this in action. Now to, to make it easier for all of you, what I've done is I'm creating some backend records called batch log. So we can see the jobs that are happening, uh, the batch size, and also the, the, you know, the chunking size that uh, this cursors are going through. So to execute that, I'm gonna open a, a simple file here. Uh, called a cursor uh, Apex script that I've written. How about we go and execute this? So this executed, let's go back to our org. Um, and you can see that, uh, you know, if I try refreshing, you can see that there are jobs that are happening now, real time. You can see that, you know, so the, the script that I had here used a simple query, and then I set the batch size, and I'm able to just cursor through the, the records and process them. This is again powerful. Um, it's gonna make your async jobs more powerful. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to you to see how you're gonna make use of this feature um, in your all your uh, async operations. Uh, the next feature that I wanted to, to demo here was uh, the file level Sockle support. And again, I have a code snippet to show you. So let's open this code snippet. So as you can see here, right, this is a nested query where I have accounts and then I have 
uh, assets and then line items and work orders for them. So this is a nested query. Um, so if you're working on use cases like field service where you have like you know multiple objects that are linked, we can easily make use of these um, file level nested socles. And this is gonna make it very easy to retrieve records. Again, this is one of the features I would say that it, it makes it so powerful that you can query all these records, but then just also be mindful of how you are processing these records and how many records you are pulling when you're using nested level socles. Uh, all right, so with that, I want to move back to the slide so we can cover some of the exciting features that we are bringing for all of you Apex developers who are working on Data Cloud. Now, you all know Data Cloud. Data Cloud is making every cloud better, and uh, Apex developers, definitely you can make use of Data Cloud to solve some of the use cases that we have never been able to solve with Apex. Now, we want to make this easier for you. So there are two different features that I want to highlight here. First, the static socle in Apex for data model objects. So in Apex now, you have static socle support. So which means that when you are working with these data model objects, you can use socle just like how you are using for regular objects. So with that, you will get strongly typed results. Uh, it eliminates typecasting. Previously, you could use CDP query classes as well, and you can put your socle or SQL there, but it required for you to manually typecast, validate that query, and all of them was a lot of work. So we want to eliminate that work and make it super easy and streamline that developer experience that you are used to. Uh, and then uh, you can now mock these uh, socles for data clouds so that you can test all these queries that you're writing within your Apex. So how about we actually jump to the uh, demo and show this feature in action. So I have a simple class to show to you. It's called reservation controller. So I'm using this class to pull all the reservations that are there in the data cloud for a particular contact in, in Salesforce. Um, so I can just run the query. You can see that uh, you know I'm able to now just use Socal directly on these DLM objects directly, just like how we are used to on the platform. Um, so here I'm actually looking for a table called Unified Link SSOT Individual CCID Table. So you know, or all of you working on Data Cloud, you know that this is the table where you sort of unify all all your records. So now I'm able to query that, that table just like as its normal platform queries. Uh, and then you can see that I, I'm able to now easily pull the reservations. Uh, finally, I wanted to show the feature where uh, we're gonna make it very easier for you to test all of these with the, the mocking service that we are giving here. And here is an example where I've written a test code for this reservation controller. So here you can see that now you can have a stub provider and we can implement a, a stub provider uh, using this uh, Sockel stub provider interface. So all we need to do is extend this interface, and there is a, a method that you need to override called handle Sockel query results. So here I can mock out all the queries. So you can see that the, the queries that I have on this object, CCID DLM, I'm able to mock it out. Uh, and uh, you know even for the reservation object, I'm able to mock out the results. Um, and if you go here, you can see that uh, you know I'm able to stub all of these and then test my code. Let's just run it quickly to show you how it can you know, run. Uh, and you can see it's all happening real time. It just passed and it was instantaneous because now we are working with the mock records. So I hope with all of these innovation, it's gonna make it easier for you to work with uh, you know, Apex and uh, it's gonna make your applications powerful. 